Well, happy Friday, everyone. Uh, here with our Total Traffic and Conversion show with uh, Betty Withrow and myself. Uh, Roy, Roy's gone to the beach. He's taken a little bit of a vacation time. So we're, our, our topic today is short, dumb content attracts crappy clients. So uh, um, I'm going to, okay, I'm going to get my disclaimer off. There is a, a room in, in marketing for short, smart content and, you know, some some little clips that take you to things. I've had quite a lot of success promoting concerts and plays, and sometimes all you need is a little a little clip giving an outline and then a link to the sign up page and, and there you go. But if you if you offer anything more sophisticated where people have to actually understand what you're offering or you're um, you know there's some complexity to it or it's not a not a you know if you're selling a ten thousand dollar program nobody nobody's gonna buy it on the basis of a 15 second clip. And I, I'm a bit um bewildered by this notion that people say who I really think should know better say that for some reason human beings because of cell phones and stuff have lost the ability to concentrate more for more than about 15 seconds you know they're the <laughs> the dory syndrome and um uh so and I don't think it's true uh and 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 if it is true I don't think we want those people as a as a client so um, but I I really dispute the notion that people don't watch live content. I've had people in a networking group that's over an hour long <laughs> say this, <laughs> you know, like so say, well, what you're doing right now is just proving that's not true because <laughs> you're willing to sp spend an hour in a networking group and you probably, um, uh, you know, watch movies that are, uh, you know, more than two hours long and you're not complaining about it or maybe binge watch series on Netflix. And mm -hmm. and I, I got this Shakespeare thing. And, you know, if the Shakespeare's, Shakespeare's Macbeth, the whole thing was, you know, Macbeth saw three witches, Macbeth lost his head. We probably wouldn't talk, be talking about uh, Shakespeare today, <laughs> how many decades, centuries later. Um and Betty, Betty, uh, as a content creator and uh, book uh, coach, writing coach, I think you have some frustrations with this notion of things. Are, people can't keep up with anything longer than a minute. Well, that's certainly true, Greg. I mean, I would really wouldn't get anything done if that was a, a true statement. Uh, you know, what I do requires quite a bit of concentration and being able to you know, grab a concept, hold it, and uh, and elaborate on it. And uh, this week, uh, one of my clients sent me a link to a video that she had done. That's a beautiful yoga meditation with over fifty thousand views. And so I said, okay, let's see what she's got. Well, the thing went on for quite a long time. I think it was about twenty five minutes, and. Her very soft and quiet and gentle voice very clearly um, was asking you to concentrate on certain things. And by the time the video was over, I was completely convinced that she's a brilliant teacher. So in terms of content, <laughs> you know, she's not saying, yeah, you know, dig me, buy my book because I'm a, I'm a great yoga teacher in a 15 minute clip. <laughs> That's not the audience she wants. And nobody's going to believe her is the point. Um, and right before we started, I mentioned to you, Greg, that um, I want to invoke my rhetoric teacher who was very ruthless in uh, destroying your argument, as we called it, if you weren't making your point well. So uh, if you're taking up people's time with, say, 15 minutes of fluff, then, yeah, you're wasting their time, and it's not even going to be good content. And as you mentioned earlier, it's going to attract exactly the people you don't want, the people who can't pay attention and are not going to follow through, and everyone's going to end up being disappointed. So uh, that's not what we want. Um, you know, uh, for instance, when I was in Mrs. Shelby's class, if I make a, a statement in a paper, um, I better be able to back it up with something that is real. And uh, if I was wandering or off point or something, she would basically say, get to the point. 
you know, like you would have to knock off maybe 90% of what you had said if it was filler. <laughs> so don't do filler. If you're going to give content, give something that's real and that people can relate to that's going to make their life better in some way. And don't worry about if it's long because if it is valuable and they are the right people for you, they'll be engaged with it and they'll want to read it or watch it uh, in order to learn about you and figure out that they want to work with you. Because ultimately, the best goal for content is to keep, give people so much information that you don't have to sell to them. They've made up their minds already. They've talked themselves into realizing your value and they're ready to go. Those are the kind of clients you really actually want, in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. I think the Dan Kennedy rule is that you can't be boring. And one way of looking at this thing is, you know, the, your, your subject line needs to engage people to at least read the first sentence and then you keep on going and it goes through. Mm -hmm. And then like a, in a long form sales letter, really your goal is to uh, present the benefits of whatever it is you're offering, you know, clearly state who it's for and who it's not for. And, um, and answer all of the objections, all of the questions. And so, you know, if you want to give a two-minute um, two minute little blurb and have somebody make an appointment with you and you spend an hour talking to determine that they're not your ideal client at all, well, go ahead. <laughs> have fun. But, you know, so I'd rather only have people reach out when they're sure they know that that you're the one for, for, yeah. for them. You're going to help. And I... Like for me, I'm I'm not an early adopter. Like I've gone through some things where I've signed up for a webinar and then maybe I've gone through three follow-ups and sometimes I've watched you know, a, a few hours of people's presentations and videos before I make a decision that that's right for me. So, um, you know, I, it, I it's just not something I'm going to do, especially for a large ticket item that's going to cost hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of dollars, you're going to have to take the time to explain it. And, um, and, and I think you have to, for one, you want, you want to have the people like you want, the, the thing with content is if it's not right for somebody, you want them to click off in the first five seconds, right? Yeah. You want, you don't want them to be watching your, your content, but the people who are interested and in that we'll we'll watch it to the end mm -hmm. you know people you know for some um <laughs> yeah there was there was a <clears throat> the, um, the godfather right <laughs> you know it depends on your uh, on if you like that kind of movie but uh you know the, but if you are you're totally intrigued by but you're going to watch it to the end no matter how long it was so one one reviewer wrote about Godfather Three. He said it was two of the worst movies he had ever seen. It was too long to be just one. <laughs> so, but uh, but that's the whole thing is you have to you have to write your content or create your videos to speak to the people you want to be in your in your tribe want to be your your ideal client. And as long as you're doing that, it doesn't really matter the length. It, you know, it can be just long enough. <laughs> you know, like it. Yeah. And it depends if you've got something really simple. I've sold a lot of things which are basically two sentences and an order button, but it's something fairly simple. And, they th and all you do is say, okay, I'm in the right place. I want to go to that concert. I want to go, I want right. to go to that play, um, that musical or whatever it is, you know, that, but, but most things need more explanation. True. True. And, and the more the more deep work goes into what it is that you're doing, the more you want to establish um, what we were just saying of that. The person already knows that they want to work with you or is, is pretty much in the 90% yes zone before you spend your time and their time discussing what your offer is. So giving them plenty of information to make that decision to, to click the schedule an appointment button or, or you know, however it is, that uh, the better it's going to be because everybody feels good about having that conversation. Yeah. And and that translates into Betty and I are 
both <laughs> compulsive bloggers. <laughs> so for better or for worse. But where it fits in with the content marketing thing is each blog is an opportunity to highlight one special thing out of out of what you do. Like, like yeah. if you're providing editing services or or graphics or uh, we're working on a site now where somebody has a, a range of, of uh, projects that they support. And each individual one is different than the other. And you can write a blog post about it. And so people can go take a look and see, well, okay, oh, yeah, all right. He's got, got experience with this. There are some photos, there's some samples. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so that's that's what I want. Let's, let's make an appointment kind of thing, right? Yeah. Where and uh, um, from a search engine optimization point of view, when people are searching for somebody's looking for that kind of thing, the page will show up. And yeah. then they can learn more about the person and then make a decision whether it's worthwhile taking it to the next step and making an appointment. Right. Yeah, it, exactly. And that's what we want is for people to have that right amount of information so they're not wasting their time. They're not wasting the service provider's time, whoever that is. And, uh, you know, and, and you can just get down to brass tacks. Like, what are we actually going to do here? Yeah. So, yeah. And if you do it right, um, the, the, as you mentioned before, the person's more or less sold by the time they make the, the phone call. Yeah. 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 And that, that's really what you want is to be at, at that place. Uh, you're in the takeoff zone. You know? Yeah. So the, so the takeoff zone. So then, then it becomes the discussion is, well, okay, can you clarify this or that? That's good. When can you start? <laughs> where do I send the money? <laughs> yes. Exactly. That's that's where you want to be in the conversation. Yeah. And and all of that um, you can't do in super short content. You 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 need a, you need a bit more. You need to uh, provide enough information for people to make uh, an informed decision. And yeah. and I and I think uh, one of the things is you have to assume that your client is interested in reading and find learning that on their own before you contact them yeah you know, like if to to just sort of say you know it's equivalent of i know something you don't phone me and find out well nobody's going to call <laughs> so. right right yeah. yeah yeah but but so so it, you know it depends and and that's where where we will do um betty and i are available to talk to you about what you're trying to do and we can we can help you decide how much content is too much. Uh, you know, we don't think there is too much, but you know, we can prioritize what's the most effective thing to do. What can we what can we work towards? And and um, we like to look at your online presence and your messaging, especially the messaging, Betty. That's Betty's thing. You sit down and talk to Betty and figure out what it is you want to do and and what your voice is and how you want to do it. And we'll, we'll come up, we can help you we'll come up with a plan and, and get your stuff out there. Yes, that's what we do. That's what we do. And, and one thing that just occurred to me while you were talking is that in your content, you want to be educating people so that you're not, as you put it, saying, I know something you don't know. It's like, here's something you don't know yet. That's a completely different conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah sort of yeah there's there's certainly there is a place for those those teasers right so you got and i i and i i think i've told this story before i went from i was watching something on 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 youtube and there's a little blurb from a fellow promising to teach you how to play piano and and add this little webinar and i signed up for it and and um you know, two hours later, if I had the money, I would have bought it. You know, <laughs> it was like yeah, yeah right. from somebody I hadn't really seen before. But his, his, even the ad, it wasn't a particularly short ad on YouTube. It was probably at least a minute. It wasn't a 15 second thing. And yeah. then it just sort of was an invitation to sign up for a webinar, which I signed up for. I've now signed up for it twice. <laughs> so, there we go. I, I think I need maybe I need there's a 12 step program for me for that <laughs> somewhere. But uh, yeah, and, and the only reason I didn't sign up for it be is because I didn't have the money. Uh, because what he outlined in that in that hour was was he described all of the issues I had for, for learning to play piano <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and 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 had a solution for it. 
And I also knew as a professional drummer that that as a, a, a pro approach to music, that was the thing to do. Yeah. Which, yeah. So, so I, I, I was, I was sold on the process. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can see how that would happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> but, um, but yeah. yeah, for sure. But then I'd have to go out and get a piano and all sorts of stuff. And that's what I was thinking is that now that you have to get a piano. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a little keyboard, but I'll probably go get a, a better keyboard that to, to, to do it. Yeah. But, but it's, it, you know, I, I didn't sign up, so I don't need the piano today. <laughs> no, not, yeah. There, there you go. Those are the steps of the steps of engagement, right? Yeah. The steps of engagement. Wait a minute. I think I can, I can, I can get my piano here. Where is that at? There, there, there we go. Uh -oh. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right, then. Just, just out of the Steinway. So when I was taking piano lessons, I was playing on a on a Steinway. It was really nice. There was the, the, the piano was not the impediment to my playing the piano. Yeah, no, nothing quite like playing on a grand piano, I agree. Yeah. And and it's and the Steinway is even nicer than other grand pianos. I don't know what it is. There's something magical about it. It's very playable, and the yeah. tone's just really nice. So, mm -hmm. yeah. But um, but I, uh, I after years of lessons, I still couldn't string together one one, <laughs> one tune that I could play smoothly. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, well, you sold me a piano anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, I, I ended up doing a, um, uh, uh, my instructor at her 80th birthday, I, she, I videoed a bunch, everybody who came to her party, and there were a couple of other career piano teachers, and one person who was about in her 90s, she's, she had this theory that um, adults who take up the piano almost never can learn to play fluently. You know, if they start piano when they're 30, <laughs> it's really hard. Yeah. And uh, and and my and and my instructor said disputed that, but none of her students disputed that. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. There wasn't a single one of her. Well, there is one, one yet one woman who played. Always played something within her capability, and she was fairly meticulous, and she she was musical. Mm -hmm. But the rest of us struggled with everything, right? You know, uh -huh. yeah. You know, we we had a hard time pay, playing "Twinkle Twinkle Little Star" to be good. And she did have one person who played the most insane, difficult pieces. But I I wouldn't say that she played them fluently or musically. You know, she, no, yeah, I I think there's something to it with starting when you're young. I mean, I started piano when I was five and it became second nature to me you know yeah. like it just um there's something about it. it it's like learning to type where instinctively you're typing everything you read <laughs> yeah it's the same sort of thing but yeah there anyway, was yeah, we, uh, well we, uh, i just click i just hit buy on the steinway page so <laughs> Yeah, you did. <laughs> well, it's going to be delivered soon. <laughs> yeah. The question is, where are we going to put it? This whole house is full of musical instruments as it is. Yeah. But, uh, That's it. And, and um, yeah, the the price for a new Steinway seems substantial. Who needs a car when you can have a piano? Yeah. <laughs> so, so I, at, Bonnie was the administrator at Unity of... Um, of Vancouver, and they accidentally left the basement door unlocked, uh -huh. and somebody rolled in a like a um, an upright piano <laughs> and left it there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you do need to offload an old piano, it's not easy to do. I know that from yeah, uh, yeah. So they found an empty room and just dropped it off. <laughs> like it's like a, it's not not that difficult to find an old piano, really. Yeah, like, true. Yeah. Yeah. Just getting it moved is challenging. That's that's what I discovered as well. But <laughs> I did find a guy who came out to the ranch and picked up the old piano, and he told me that he had seen a worse road before. Where was it? It was in Africa. And uh, <laughs> I said, well, I can't thank you enough for being willing to make the drive. <laughs> oh, yeah. Good. Yeah. 
So I do have, um, I wish I had video in those days, but when I, I was playing in a band and we moved a piano. So we had this piano, like it was an upright piano loaded in the back of a pickup truck with somebody sitting there playing it. I, I wish I had photos and video of that. Oh, that would be cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah that yeah. would be cool. Well, we're not talking about content anymore, Greg. We're not talking about content anymore. So there we go. So we we're digressing, but it, there there must be a, a relevant point to this somewhere. Yeah. Uh, actually, it all came down to in your marketing. So the, what I was trying to illustrate this is the people who see say that people can't deal with short content are missing the the, the journey. The, the right. so that that little short blurb that was on. On, on um, YouTube took me to a page that provided more information and a sign up form. I think there was a little video on that that form that was probably five minutes mm -hmm. long describing mm -hmm. what it was. So it was a little bit more, so I knew a bit more about it and then there was a button to register for this presentation and the presentation went uh, the active presentation was about an hour. And then the person answered questions for another half an hour. And um, uh, I know it was successful because it's popped up every time somebody bought this thing, right? And they, uh, I, um, I think, I'm guessing that it was certainly tens of thousands of dollars and maybe $100,000 in this program from that one broadcast. <laughs> so, but, but it wasn't, it wasn't a, you know, wasn't a 30 second clip. It was, you know, start it, the teaser started, and, and mm -hmm. you basically you want to lead people down the customer journey. And yes. and some people are would um, can get there quickly, uh, uh, but others will take like we we have a few people we've been talking to about either our, the book um, package we offer or total traffic and conversion. And usually we end up we have an or original meeting and then we you know come up with a plan and then we. Mm -hmm go to the next step, but it doesn't, rarely it's just, it's what we offer is not something you say, okay, I like that, just pay for it. <laughs> right. Yeah, and we'll figure it out later. So, and you know, so, so it's up to what what you're trying to sell and what you're doing if your services, uh, and, and I think our main thing is what you're offering probably has more moving parts and more considerations than you can present in, in um, in a short, really short clip. So you need to take people through a journey to learn more about you, learn more about what you're offering, and decide if it's for you. And um, and I and I think it's a mistake that if you provide them very little information and then expect to explain it to them in a in a meeting, I think that can be uh, for one, you're you're going to get unqualified people <laughs> to come to 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 talk to. And maybe what you offer is not appropriate for them at all. Right. And uh, um, and it's just uh, you need to take them through the journey. And that journey could be longer than you're, you're maybe planning for at the moment. That's right. That's right. Are you ready to be with them every step of the way? That's yeah. The yeah. And um, so I, I think this thing here, dumb short content attracts crappy uh, clients. I think the people we don't really want to work with are the people who don't have the patience to read through what you've written, right? If they're not going to read through your sales page or they're not going to read through your blog post or whatever it is, or even what understand your offer, then they're probably not a good client for you anyway. But you know, no, no matter what they're doing, they're not going to either do what's needed to do, be done or take the time to even understand what the advice is. <laughs> so, right. you know, so it's just um, not going to end well. So, so write your content to attract the ideal client. Um, you understand them as much as possible, what they need and make sure you position so that you offer that to them. And uh, uh, if, if they're not and provide enough information, so if you're not the right person for them, they they need not call. <laughs> Truth, yeah, yeah. So yep. any any other thing uh, we want to want to say other than uh, visit Total yeah. Traffic and Conversion or reach out to Betty or myself, and uh, we can start a discussion about That's what to do. 
about what to do. That's what to do. That's what you do. <laughs> so yeah, so that sounds like a good a good way to good time to end this all. I'll play the little video out. <laughs> One of these days, I'm going to push the wrong button, but we'll we'll see. Anyway, happy <laughs> Friday, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.